On this episode of Fishing Edge, I'm heading back to a place that over the past six or so years has become one of my favorite fishing destinations. Lakes Entrance, or Lakes as it's often referred to, is a genuine seaside town that lies an easy four hour drive from Melbourne and offers loads of fishing opportunities for everything from snapper and kingfish offshore to brim flathead and prawns in the estuaries. Lakes Entrance is also Southeast Australia's largest fishing port, which processes around 7,000 tonnes each year. By international standards, this is a tiny amount of fish, but within Australia, it is quite significant. The Lakes Entrance Cooperative is owned by fishermen and charges a per kilo rate to handle fish that is sufficient only to cover costs and break even. Vessels berth at the cooperative where an automated belt takes the fish to an area where it is de-iced, weighed, labelled and then re-iced before being loaded onto a truck that takes the fish either to Melbourne or Sydney fish markets. The largest fishery landing in the cooperative is the $50 million, 12,000 tonne southeast trawl fishery, SETF, and Lakes Entrance is its major port. The exact weight of fish landed from this fishery flow electronically from the cooperative scales into the AFMA database. This data, in combination with hours towed, is used to assess catch rates, which are part of the stock assessment process. Information such as the length and age of fish are also gathered to help assess catch rates. By looking at growth rings on the ear bone, scientists determine how old a fish is and their relative abundance in the fishery. These scientific assessments are used to set annual quotas for more than 20 targeted fish stocks, like tiger flathead, blue grenadier and pink ling. The assessments consider recreational and state fishery catches and any fish that is discarded. SETF fishers own or lease a set share of the quota and when this is caught, fishing ceases. The fishery also operates independent observers who collect information like lengths, otoliths and the amount of fish discarded. The Lakes Entrance Cooperative is regarded as one of the best run cooperatives in the country and the management of this fishery is just as highly regarded. From a recreational angler's point of view, however, this place often produces fish in the extra large size. And over the past seasons, it's also rated highly on my fishing calendar as its offshore waters have been producing some exceptional striped marlin fishing. On this trip, I'm heading out fishing with two of my mates whom I generally fish with on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm not filming. The first of them is Julian Coyne, or Jules as he's better known. The second person is Lee McDuffie, my shop manager and a good mate. So with the boat loaded, it was time to head off on our long journey to the Marlin Grounds. about making the most of your fishing, conserving fuel, getting to the fishing spot and getting home. We've run 70 kilometres offshore and although it's dead flat conditions, we've just run out at a beautiful 24, 25 knots because I know then I'm burning about 25 litres of fuel per hour. We're out here at the gas rigs and the oil rigs in Bass Strait and it's marlin season. The boys are at the back of the boat getting some gear ready. We're gonna chuck some lures in, find some bait and then we're hopefully gonna to go to a teaser and skip baiting program. It's exciting fishing, catching marlin, but it's even better when you're doing it in Victoria. Let's go fishing. Now, Jules, we're out here chasing marlin, and a few years ago, it was just a pipe dream. Yep. But a couple of years ago, well, last season, you and I had some wonderful fishing out here. I've seen great fishing, Lee, and hopefully, um the conditions are good today. We've got the weather. Yep. Water looks great. That's now we've it. got to find the fish. That's it. It's all about water quality and we've got good current pushing down from the east coast of New South Wales into this part of the world. There has been marlin here of recent weeks, so fingers crossed. We'll get a couple. What are we going to do, mate? Lures, skip baits, what? Get the lures out, find yep. some bait, get to work and find a fish. Beautiful. Let's do it. Let's go. The whole idea of what we're doing here is searching. We need to try and find where the bait is because in marlin fishing you find the bait, you find the fish. It's a pretty simple sort of formula. 
The lures we're running aren't overly large. This is a favourite of mine. It's a Marlin Magic baby hardhead in Lumo. This guy's caught me several big bluefin and a whole pile of Marlin. That leader's even got a little scuff on it from the last fish I got a couple of weeks ago. The trick to lure fishing for Marlin, small, ultra sharp little hooks. Not big heavy gauge ones and light tackle like this 15 kilo Makaira setup. With that sort of gear, these hooks go in, they stick really well, and the hookup rate on Marlin is really good with lures when you do it this way. The gear's in the water, so it's time to now tweak the sounder. It's reading beautifully as it is, but if we change a few settings, we're gonna get the best out of it. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it for today. To start with, I'm going to adjust my TVG, time variable gain. That will clear up a lot of your surface clutter and it's really interesting, the deeper the water, you'll often have it up a bit higher. Back in snapper season, you know, shallow water will have it down low. So here I'm probably going to go straight into, we go to advance, we go to TVG, it's on five. Watch this, if we go to six, we're dropping down that clutter. See, it's bringing this top half of the screen very, very clear. I still want a bit, so I reckon at the moment five or six is pretty good. We might end up changing that through the day, but for now that's beautiful. Scroll speed's at times three, ping speed's still quite high at 18 because we're only in 60 metres of water here, Marlin fishing. There's a heap of bait, boys. Drop the bait jig while they're doing that. That's beautiful. Okay, uh, 30 to 50 metres, mate. Beautiful patch of bait. We're, get this, we'll take this gain out of auto. We're now into manual and I'll just pull that back a little bit because there's a fair bit of clutter at the moment. So that is a big patch of slimy mackerel, just what we're after. We've run down the hill, found some bait, jigged some bait. We've got liveys in the tank, and we're gonna put skip baits on the riggers. This looks so good here. Probably one of my favorite ways of catching marlin is skip baiting, using a fresh dead bait like this mackerel, skipping it along the surface. You get to see the bite, it's so exciting. Rigging a skip bait can be really easy. I like to keep mine very simple because I want it to be fast. I'll show you how I do it. A bit of 200 pound Black Magic Tough Trace, to a KL80, or you can use whatever hook suits you. Circles are great because it gets the fish in the corner of the jaw. Off that, about a two inch piece of stiff plastic tube, and I've got wax thread here, it's about 70 pound, or you can use rigging Dacron or whatever suits. Wax thread's good though, because you can tie granny knots in it and it won't fall apart. Now, the trick to rigging a good skippy, you don't want to put too many holes in it. So when they're fresh like this, I just get the needle, I stick it straight down through there, just back sort of behind his nostrils a bit. It's nice and hard, and I stick that in there. I get one of my pieces of wax thread through the needle like so, pull it all the way through. Then get the needle and I come from the other side, the bottom up, we go like that. Now I get the other thread of wax thread, put that in there, pull that through. From this point, I just pull those up so they're on the nose of the bait like this and then I go sort of a granny knot like that that's a little bit loose and then I'll go around the tube like so, the base of the tube a couple of times, granny knot, granny knot like that. Now that tube is tight on the head of that mackerel. That tube will stop that hook from swinging back as the bait bounces along the surface and burying into the bait. From there, I get my needle, I go under the jaw and out the side of the eye, just like that. Hook that on there, pull that through, and you can do this really quick, guys, once you get the hang of it. You can go through there, over the top, and then I just go straight through the gill plate, like that. Then I get this other thread, we're going to do exactly the same, but on the opposite side. So I'll stick that needle in that side, out there, hook that on, go across there, 
then I've made a cross over the top of the fish's head. We don't need to go stitching the body so much because it's a fresh bait and I've got plenty of bait. I'll just keep rotating these every hour or so. And for now, that's nice and tight. It's a very fast way to rig a bait. I then tie under the chin like that. Not too tight, because you'll tear holes in the gill plates. Couple of granny knots, just like that. Trim off the excess. And that is my way of rigging a slimy mackerel for a skip bait for a marlin. We're fishing really close to these oil rigs, and this one over here is halibut. Uh, the only problem is you can't go too close to them. There's a 500 metre exclusion zone around the outside of them. If you have a look on your GPS, you'll see a thin red line that goes around them. Stick on the outside of that, and you should be fine. We're constantly trying to stock up more bait. There's not loads and loads of bait through this area. We're finding little patches, so whenever we do, we just stop, the boys reverse really quick, you drop the bait, jig straight over the side, and hopefully load up on a string of mackerel. The key to doing it is having not too much gear in the water. We've got two skip baits on the riggers, the two teasers there. We can get everything out of the way just so quickly to do this. If you've got too much gear, you'll have tangles and mess and all sorts of stuff. We've rolled on into the afternoon, the sea breeze has started to pick up and there's really good bait through this area. We haven't had a bite on the skip baits or the teasers for ages, so we've switched over to a couple of live mackerel on the outriggers. We're just slow trolling them and this is our teaser for live baiting. It's called a strip teaser and when you put this bad boy in the water it looks like about a hundred slimy mackerel following the boat. Absolutely deadly for pulling marlin up from mid-water up to the surface to eat these baits. Lee's just put the teasers in the water. We've also got a live bait in the tubes ready to pitch back. Slimy mackerel bridle rig to 120 pound fluorocarbon leader. Hopefully when those fish come up on the teasers, we've got a, a bait ready to pitch back at them. We've come into an area here and there's a lot of life, a lot of albatross around and up ahead. There's a couple of seals and albatross sitting in one patch. They've got a bait ball pushed up to the surface. Jules and Lee are looking forward to get up on that. I'm watching out the back where we've got our teasers out because there's every chance this is where you're going to raise a marlin. Then we'll make that switch, pull the teaser in, throw the live bait that's sitting in that tube and get the hook up. Got him, Jules. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, he's on, Lee. Okay. There's one on the teaser. On the teaser, get the skippy back. There's another one there. Yeah, you got him on, Jules. Yeah, I'm tight. Go forward okay, for me. Go forward. There's one on the teaser here. Yeah, yeah mate. We're tight. Here. We're tight, Lee. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, There's another one on that teaser. There he goes. Oh, look at him go. Right oh, yeah. in the back. I'll get this gear out of the way. And this is how quick it happens. A change of plans, we've been chasing water all morning. We've peeled back down south, we ripped the gear in, look at that fish go. We've ripped the gear in, put the gear in. We didn't even go 100 metres. We're on, the water's a degree and a half warmer here than it was 10 kilometres up that way. We'll get up on this fish. He's off. He had a mate too, so we'll come back and get him. You are right, Will? Yeah, mate, go for it. Goes to show you, Lee, how quickly it can happen. Oh, that skip bait hit the water. Two seconds, fish is on. And he had a mate with him too. And another one there. Get that out of the way. That was so quick. Okay. Yeah, I saw it. as soon as you put the bait out. I turned around to go do the other one. <laughs> yeah, he was on. How 
unbelievable is it to be catching them right near a gas rig. That Fortescue rig is part of what's called Central Block out here off Lakes Entrance. You've got Halibut, Fortescue and Cobia rig. Glass calm seas. Four hours from home. Unbelievable. That fishing Jules and I had here last year, you know, we, we both said to catch one in Victoria would be amazing. And there's been a lot of marlin caught here, don't get me wrong, we're not the first to do it, but the fishing we found last year when it was right was as hot a striped marlin fishing as you could ever have. The only reason Jules and I didn't catch more than three or four in a day was because they were big and two of us just couldn't land them quick enough. We had a lot of fun a trying to fun. catch the ones that we did, but we did. it was mayhem at times. You're right there, dude. The gear Jules is using is just ideal for catching these striped marlin. I think he's going to jump. Come up, he's going to come jump. up. He's going to come up out the back here. Here he comes. There he goes. Look at him go. Oh, oh, oh. Forward, forward. How good is it in this weather? Just a little. That's it. That's it. Just We're a little, tight. mate. That's it. Head shake. See that rod bouncing. Back up now, Duff. Back up. The gear Jules has got is a 15 kilo outfit. It's a little custom built. Oh, look at him go. A little custom built rod of mine. Makaira 30 reel, 15 kilo Black Magic IGFA line, and it's just ideal for this sort of fishing. Look at him go, he's coming towards us. Here he comes. Whew. It's cool being so calm, you can see him like changing direction under the water. There he is. Nice work, Jules. Because all we're doing here is just backing down on this fish. The whole idea is A, we want to catch him, but we want to catch this fish as quick as we can because there was another one that came up on the teaser while this fish was hooked up. So we're going to work this area and hopefully get his mate or possibly his 10 other mates that will also be in this area. So at the moment we've got Lee just driving the boat forward, creating a little bit of line pressure in that water. Hopefully that'll bring his head up a little bit quicker for us. And Lee can uh, put a tag in the fish. Job done. Might get a jump out of him here. Go forward, Duff. Just go forward. Tiny bit. There he goes. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Oh. Here he goes. Sort of don't mind if he gets yeah, off, but we want to. Yep, that's it, Lee. That's it. Go after him, Duff. Normally when we're fishing, at that point, Jules, Duff, you know, we've got the tag in. We hold the leader, snap the leader or straighten the hook out. But we want to show Duff, you the fish, so. Put your bum that way for me. That's it. We're going to take a little bit more easy. Keep going, Duff. You can see the remora on the side of him. Here he comes. Here he comes. Look at that. That is why. That is why we go marlin fishing. They are just such a wonderful, wonderful looking fish. There we go. We get this hook out. That KL80, which is now caught in the glove. That's the remnants of the skip bait. And it's time for this guy to go. Do you want to let him go, Jules, or me? No, go for it, buddy. Let's go get another one. That, boys, is how well done, mate. it's supposed to roll. Well done, Doug. Let's That's go get another one. Stuff. Awesome. Gear back in. Well done, guys. Unfortunately, our sea breeze from the southeast has swung to the southwest and let go at 20 knots. It probably doesn't look like it through the camera, but trust me, it is. Duffy's all rugged up in the wet weather gear for one very good reason. The waves have been crashing over the side of the boat. However, it started off as a beautiful day. We got our marlin, and that's what we came to do. Marlin fishing in Victoria. But till next time, it's time for us to head home. <laughs>